Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Abigail Joy, if you don't already know. This is my channel, The Pursuit of Joy, and today we're talking about pests. Now, it is super hot here in Toronto. We are going through a bit of a heat wave all around Canada. If you're not in Canada, you've probably heard about it on the news. So please bear with me if my face is shiny and my hair is greasy, it's hot. Uh, and I have to turn off the AC and the fans to be able to record so that you don't pick up that sound. So, but it is kind of inevitable when we are unfortunately still building a pipeline. If any of you know me, I'm a bit of a hippie. I think everybody should be a bit of a hippie. We should think about the home that we live on first because if we don't have a home to live on, then what's the use of thinking about anything else? Anyways, rant over, let's get into pests. Look at those palm trees, damn! So I am here to give you some of my tips from my journey with having houseplants and inevitably having pests. So there are many different kinds of pests, from thrips, to mealybugs, to aphids, to scale. And if you collect plants, house plants, you will get one or more of these in your journey. It's just, it's gonna happen. So here are my tips. Feel free to comment below your tips if I've missed any, but this is what I do to prevent and treat the pests that I get in my house. Tip number one, beneficial bugs. So I have behind me here, here, there, <laughs> I have some mini Thripex, which is a brand of beneficial bugs. This one is called Copert, Copert. And I think you might be able to see a few crawling around there. Yeah. They're just doing their thing. These guys specifically go after thrips, but they can go after the other pests. So these two sachets, I have two. This is not the only one. I picked up from a lady that I was buying plants off of. She gave these to me for free, actually, which is awesome. But you can go onto your local Facebook planty groups and place bulk orders with your planty friends so that the price is reduced significantly. I believe if you bulk order with friends here in Canada, it comes to about 50 cents a package like this, sometimes even as low as 10 cents. So yes, you can place orders by yourself online, but I highly recommend going onto your local planty Facebook groups and figuring out an order that you can do with friends to make it super, super cheap. Put that back there. That is next to my Thai constellation. If you have more rare plants, you know that pests are the devil. <laughs> now, because there's lots of money involved, obviously. So tip number two is rubbing alcohol. Now, this is my second tip, just because especially for beginner plant collectors, Rubbing alcohol is something that we usually all have in our households. Rubbing alcohol is great for treating very quickly. Uh, it is not great for long-term treatments just because it can be abrasive. So I do not recommend keeping it on your foliage for more than 24 hours. You want to wipe it down again with some water or stick it in the shower. That will be a later tip. Keep that in mind. Shower. So rubbing alcohol, yes, it's great, but do not leave it on your foliage. Now, don't forget that our foliage have pores, which create photosynthesis. So we do not want to be blocking our pores, just like our skin, which I am totally doing right now by sweating up a storm. Yay. Rubbing alcohol is great for pests like scale, the brown, bugs that kind of cling on to the stems of some tropical plants. Other than that, rubbing alcohol is just cheap and easy and usually on hand. So my third tip is 
neem oil. Now, usually people have to go out of their way to buy neem oil. I know a lot of people buy it off of Amazon. If you have stuck around with me for a little while here on this channel, you know that I am a big advocator of saying no to Amazon. You can get neem oil from local health food stores. That's probably the number one. Also, why not ask around your planty friends, say, hey, can I siphon off a little bit of your neem oil for maybe a propagation or a cutting? A great way to get some neem oil if you need. Now, neem oil is a great preventative. However, I will say that I recently was dealing with some really bad mealybugs and they built up an immunity to my neem oil. So while neem oil is a great preventative, I don't recommend it as a treatment, especially for infestations that have gotten to quite a decent size. So neem oil can be diluted with water and natural slash gentle dish soap. There are lots of ratios, dilution ratios that you can find just doing a quick, simple Google search. Now essential oils, is what makes up neem oil and because I actually used to make some skincare, I know that essential oils are a little bit thinner. So that leads me to tip number four, that is horticultural oil. Horticultural oil is a fairly new one for me, but it has been the most effective so far. Horticultural oil is made up of mineral oils that tend to be quite a bit thicker than essential oils. So again, we do need to be wiping off of those leaves after treatments. I would say about 24 hours is the time that you want to be washing them off or showering them off. But horticultural oil has been great for me recently. I have had quite a few thrips and I mix the horticultural oil with, again, water and natural dish soap. I not only spray my foliage, but I also wipe it down with horticultural oil, and it has been great. There are a few different brands you can buy. I will try and link some for you down in the description below. Actually, I will link everything that I use down for you below. I think it has been so effective for me, especially when dealing with thrips, because it is thicker. So I recently found out, thanks to Daryl from Houseplant Journal, which I will link either here on screen or below or both. He's fantastic. But I learned from him recently that when it comes to thrips, they actually lay their eggs, they bury into the foliage to lay their eggs. So when we're wiping off that first layer, it might not be getting much, and it's probably not getting all the eggs. So, when it comes to treatments, any kind of treatment that you're doing, you want to make sure, especially with thrips, that you are treating on a regular basis, you are monitoring on a regular basis until you know that all of the infestation is gone. Really hard to do with thrips. I'm still trying to manage it, but again, it's just inevitable when you have houseplants. It's going to happen. So you might as well try all the different tips, take all the different advice to try and relieve stress. Because if you know it's going to happen, but you know how to treat it and what to do, then it's a lot less stressful knowing that your plants will eventually get pests at some points. So. That leads me to tip number five, which is the easiest prevention method I've found and the most natural. So wash and shower your plants. If you think about what they go through in nature, most of our houseplants are tropical, right? So they go through tropical rainstorms. They go through tropical thunderstorms, really harsh wind, really harsh rain. Not only does that make them stronger, make their roots go further into the ground, but it cleans their foliage, it cleans their stems. Most bugs, most pests come from a buildup of dirt and or dust. So why not haul your plant into the shower once a week, once every two weeks, and give it a really good hose down, a really good spray down. That's what they go through in nature anyways. So that's probably my favorite tip. Let's try and replicate nature 
for our plants since we kind of did bring them indoors in an environment that they are not really accustomed to. So other than that, I have one more tip and I know that all of us deal with fungus gnats, especially in the summer when it's hot, when it's humid, when the compost starts to smell, <laughs> uh, fungus gnats. So on my plant journey, I didn't know in the beginning what diatomaceous earth meant, but I heard it constantly. Now diatomaceous earth, I will probably put a definition up here for you because I won't have the best one, but it's kind of carcass and old uh, residue of other bugs and, and pests and you can sprinkle that on top of the soil all, all the way around and it actually prevents fungus gnats from going into the top layer of soil and laying more eggs so it helps you kick that fungus gnat problem in the butt a lot quicker. Now if you're going to repot or if you're going to put uh, plants in moss, just like I did in my repot with me video, then you will want to maybe sprinkle some throughout the moss or put some throughout your potting mix. But diatomaceous earth is a great way to prevent not only fungus gnats, but it can prevent other pests as well. So that's why it's my tip number six. So I will go through all those tips again very quickly. Tip number one, beneficial bugs. They, they're pretty friggin' awesome. Unless you don't want more bugs in your house, then that's a different story. But tip number two is rubbing alcohol because it's easy and usually on hand. Tip number three is neem oil as a great preventative. But don't forget, pests can build up an immunity quite quickly to neem oil. So number four is horticultural oil, which is a lot thicker and I've had the best results with it myself to date. Tip number five is wash and shower those leaves. You can also bring them into a bathtub with some lukewarm water and some gentle soap if you already have pests and give them a really good wash down. And tip number six is sprinkling diatomaceous in, throughout, or on top of your soil to prevent fungus gnats, eggs, and other pests. If uh, you think I've missed anything or you have other tips and tricks, please, I'd love to hear them. Put them in the comments below. I'll chat with you down there as well. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a thumbs down. Either or works for me. But until next time, until our porch patio tour, I wish you well on your pursuit of joy. I wish you well on your pursuit of no pests. <laughs> Until next time, peace. Mint chocolate chip, president's choice. So freaking good. Exactly what I need right now. These truck drivers are pissing me off. They're stressing me out. Look at those palm trees, damn.